In this video, we are going to see how we can use static variable to count the objects created in the class. Here we have written a program to count number of students registered in a school. We have defined a class name student. We have defined two instance variables name of type string and roll number of type int. We have a static variable school name of type string and it is assigned value double OA. Pay attention on this statement. We have one more static variable named counter of type int. This counter variable will be used to count the number of student objects created in the class. We have a default constructor. It is a good practice to write default constructor even though you are not using it to avoid future errors. We have a parameterized constructor that is accepting student name from the object created. We are also assigning student roll number but we are going to auto generate the roll number using static variable counter. Then we have a method named getStudentInfo to display the student information. We have a separate class static demo one for main method. So the first statement is you're creating student object but before any object is created JVM loads the class into the memory and when the class is loaded memory for static variables defined inside the class is allocated. So if you look at the code of class student we have two static variables. When the student class is loaded inside the memory, memory for static variable school name and counter will be reserved. And where is the memory for static variable allocated? Inside the area known as metaspace. So inside metaspace, memory for static variable school name is reserved and value double OA is stored. Also, memory for static variable counter is reserved. We have not assigned any value to variable counter. Hence, the default value is 0. Default value for integer variables is always 0. So once the class is loaded and memory for static variable is reserved, control comes to the main method and student object s1 is created. Look at the diagram. Reference variable s1 is created on the stack and the object is created on the heap. We have two instance variables, name and roll number. Every object has copy of its instance variables. Hence, object s1 will reserve space for instance variable roll number and name. We are passing a string argument that is OGES. As soon as the object is created, an implicit call goes to the parameterized constructor with one string parameter. So control of the program comes over here and value OGES is captured by local variable name. Memory for the local variables belonging to the parameterized constructor is reserved on the stack. We have one local variable name, hence Memory for local variable name is reserved and value passed through the object is stored in this name variable. After the memory is reserved for the local variable, the control comes inside and the code inside the constructor executes. This dot name is the instance variable name equal to name. This is the local variable name. Value of local variable name is OGES. So the instance variable name will be assigned value OGES. Now the next statement is pay attention at this statement instance variable roll number equal to plus plus counter. So what is this plus plus counter? Plus plus is a increment operator. Now there are two types of incrementation, pre-increment and post-increment. Please refer to the video titled operators for more details. Here in our program, we are using pre-incrementation method. Pre-incrementation happens when the increment operator precedes the variable. And in this case, Value is first incremented and then assigned. So over here, the increment operator is preceding the variable. So when the increment operator is used, value of the variable is incremented by 1. So value of the variable counter is 0 plus 1 equal to 1. So after this incrementation process happens, value of static variable counter is modified to 1. And then the modified value 1 is assigned to the instance variable roll number. Hence, here in the heap, value 1 is stored inside the instance variable roll number belonging to object s1. After execution of the parameterized constructor is over, memory reserved for its local variable is released from the stack and control comes back. Next statement is, we are creating one more object s2. So reference variable s2 is created on the stack and the object is created on the heap and object s2 will have its own copy of instance variables. So memory for instance variable roll number and name is reserved inside object s2. We are passing a string argument Mira. 
Hence, it will give a call to the parameterized constructor accepting one string argument. The argument passed is stored in the local variable belonging to the parameterized constructor. So, memory for local variable name belonging to the parameterized constructor is reserved in the stack memory area and value Mira is stored in variable name. Next, the code inside parameterized constructor executes an instance variable name is assigned the value of local variable name. Hence, Mira will be stored inside instance variable name belonging to object S2. Next statement is instance variable role number equal to plus plus counter. We are incrementing counter variable by 1. Counter variable is a static variable and it is shared by every object of the class. Hence, every object created will be able to access the latest modified value of the variable. Now, in this code, one student has registered. Hence, the counter is 1. When the second student object is created, counter will be incremented by 1 again. So, value of counter was 1 plus 1 equal to 2. Hence, the updated value of counter variable is 2. And this updated value is assigned to instance variable roll number. Hence, value 2 will be stored inside the instance variable roll number belonging to object S2. Now, once the execution of the constructor is over, memory reserved for its local variables is released and control goes back and the next statement is executed. Here we are giving a method call s1.getStudentInfo. GetStudentInfo is a non-static method. We need to call it using an object. We are calling it using object s1. Interpreter reads the method call and control of the program goes to the method definition. SOP prints role number, name and school name to the console. This dot roll number will retrieve value of roll number belonging to object s1. This dot name will retrieve value of name belonging to object s1. And school name is a static variable. It will retrieve value OA assigned to it. So your output looks like this. Once the execution of the code is over, control will go back and next statement s2 dot get student info. This is again a method call using object s2. So control of the program will come to the definition of the method and the code inside the method executes. We are calling the method using object s2. So this dot roll number will retrieve value of roll number belonging to object s2. This dot name will retrieve value of name belonging to object s2 and static variable school name will retrieve its value. So the next output is also printed. This way you create n number of objects. The value of counter variable is incremented by 1 and it is a static variable. Hence every object will be able to access the modified value. So this is how we count the number of objects using static variable.